Welcome back everybody to Momentum and Impulse uh, with AP Physics 6. See? <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about collisions and more specifically inelastic collisions. Let's get into this. So basics, we have like elastic collisions and perfectly inelastic collisions. It's probably better to uh, copy this other slide. But here are all the different kinds of collisions and explosions and things like that. Uh, I'm not going to talk about everything, but if you want to pause and write it down, you guys should. But key things to know is for every kind of collision explosion, momentum is conserved. And today what we're going to be talking about is this general inelastic collision or these perfectly inelastic collisions. Kinetic energy is lost. Okay? So let's get into these kind of problems. All right. So example number 10. A 480 kilogram car moving at 14.4 meters per second hits from behind a 570 kilogram car moving at 13.3 meters per second in the same direction. If the new speed of the heavier car is 14 meters per second, what is the speed of the lighter car after the collision, assuming that any unbalanced forces on the system are negligible? Okay, so whenever we're doing problems like this, we should pretty much be looking at the conservation of momentum formula. So momentum initial is equal to momentum final. So we want to think about what happens before the collision. That's going to be the momentum initial. And then we want to think about what happens after the collision. That's going to be hap that's the momentum final. So before the collision, we have a mass of one object, 480, is traveling with a certain velocity, plus the mass of the other object traveling with a certain velocity. And after the collide, the mass of one object has a final velocity, and the mass of the other object has another final velocity. So let's start plugging this in. Mass of the first object, 480. Velocity of the first object is 14.4. Uh, mass of the other object is 570, and velocity of the second object is 13.3 before they collide. After they collide, mass of the first object 480, we don't know what the final velocity is. That's what we're looking for. It says, what is the speed of the lighter object after the collision? But the other object uh, has a mass of uh, 570, and it says after the collision, uh, the heavier car is going 14 meters per second, so 14. Now we're going to do a little bit of math to figure out what this V1 final is. So we do 480 times 14.4 plus 570 times 13.3. And then I'm going to subtract from the other side 570 times 14. And then I'm going to divide by 480. And I get 13.57 meters per second. So after they collide, this car here is going to be going 13.57 meters per second. Okay, let's move on. Let's look at this conceptual question. A small glider is coasting horizontally when suddenly a very heavy piece of cargo falls out of the bottom of the plane. Okay? You can neglect air resistance just after the cargo has fallen out. Uh, part A, the plane needs to speed up and the cargo slow down. Uh, B, the plane speeds up, but the cargo does not change speed. C, neither the cargo nor the plane change speed. D, the cargo slows down, but the plane does change speed. E, both the cargo and the plane speed up. So you might think, oh, okay, so at the beginning, they're going with a certain velocity. And when this gets let go, it's like, oh, this might be going faster because it has less mass. <laughs> However, what we should know is at the beginning, this has a certain amount of momentum, right? There's a certain amount of mass and a velocity that is going. What happens after this is they, the mass splits into two pieces, one and two, but they're still both going with the same velocity. If we looked at the combined momentum of this, this will still be the same. So what that means is the, uh, the plane, uh, neither the cargo nor the plane change speed. They're both going to split apart, but they still keep the same velocity they originally had. And we can see that way, momentum is still conserved. Okay, That one might have been a bit tricky, but we should have known that momentum is still conserved when the person lets go of it. Okay, okay move it. Okay, let's look at example number 12. A 2 kilogram object traveling east at 20 meters per second collides with a 3 kilogram object traveling at 10 meters per second west. After the collision, the 2 kilogram object has a velocity of 5 meters per second to the west. How much kinetic energy was lost during the collision? Okay, so before we can find how much kinetic energy was lost, let's find how fast this block is going after the collision. So again, we're going to do the conservation of momentum. So before things collide, we have this 2 kilogram object going 20 meters per second. 
And then we have this 3 kilogram object going 10 meters per second to the left, so negative 10. And then after they collide, the 2 kilogram object is going 5 meters per second to the left. And the 3 kilogram object, we don't know how fast that's going. So let's find that velocity. So 2 times 20, uh, minus 30, and then plus uh, 10 to the other side, divide that by 3. And we get a velocity of 6.67 meters per second to the right. Okay. Now let's find this change in kinetic energy. So let's find what the kinetic energy final is. This is going to be equal to one-half mass of the first object, which is 2, times velocity final of the second object, which is negative 5. So negative 5 squared plus one-half mass of the second object, which is 3, and velocity final of the second object, which is 6.67 squared. So let's figure out what that is. Squared uh, plus oh, 6.67 squared. Uh, and we get 91.73 um, joules. But let's find how much energy it had before they collided. So one-half mass of the first object, two. Before it collided, it was going 20 meters per second, so 20 squared, plus one-half the second object was going negative 10 meters per second, so negative 10 squared. So let's figure this out. So it should be more before they collide. 20 squared uh, plus... And we get, actually, they had 550 joules before they collided. So they lose energy when they collide. Remember that? The kinetic energy is lost. So let's do 550 minus 91.73. And then we see a loss of, uh, we could say, negative 458.3 joules because it lost that many joules. Okay. All right, moving on. Uh, we're going to skip this 2D problem for next time. Uh, but let's look at this example. Consider two less than desirable options. In the first, op in the first, uh, you are driving 30 miles per hour and crash head-on into a dented car going 30 miles per hour. In the second option, you are driving 30 miles per hour and crash head-on into a stationary brick wall. In neither cases does your car bounce off the thing that it hits, and the collision time is the same in both cases. Which of the these two situations result in the greatest impact force? Hmm. So this looks a little bit crazy. Um, you might first think when you're looking at this, oh, okay, if you're hitting another car going at 30 miles per hour, that means that it's kind of like hitting a wall at 60 miles an hour. That's what you might originally think. But let's just focus on this green car for both of them, okay? So when we think about the impulse of this green car, right, we know impulse is in change in momentum. So we know in both scenarios, they're going to be hitting the object, whether it's the car or the wall, with a speed of 30 miles per hour. And what we also know is that when they hit the object, their final velocity is going to be zero for both cases. So what that means is for the green car in both scenarios, the change in momentum is going to be exactly the same. They go from 30 miles an hour to zero miles an hour, so the change in momentum is going to be the same. That also being the case, uh, if change in momentum is equal to the force times time, and the time they're in contact, the collision time is the same, that means that the force they're going to be experiencing is also the same. Okay? And there's actually a good uh, Mythbusters video showing this, so if you guys want to look at that, I would highly suggest looking that up on YouTube. Uh, looking like this. <laughs> okay, moving on. Let's look at this. Two objects with the same mass move along the same line in opposite directions. The first mass is moving with the speed v. The objects collide, stick together, and move with the initial with the speed point one v in the direction of the velocity of the first mass before the collision. What was the speed of the second mass before the collide? Okay, so in this situation, they stick together. So this is a perfectly inelastic collision. How we want to set this up is we want to look at it like this: momentum initial equals momentum final. So we want to look at things before they collide and then after. So before they collide, the, fir the first object, mass, uh, do they both have the same mass? Yeah, they have the same mass. So m uh, has a certain velocity v. And the second object, ma uh, mass of the second object, same velocity, and we don't know what the velocity is. So I'm going to call this velocity question mark. <laughs> 
But we know after they collide, they're going to stick together. So if they stick together, that means they're going to clump up. So it's going to be m plus m. And they're going to be moving with a velocity of 0.1 v to the right. So 0.1 v to the right. Knowing all this, let's try to find what this velocity is. So let's try to write this mv plus mv question mark is equal to 2m point 1v. What I'm going to do is put this to the other side. So mv question mark is equal to 2, or I'm going to say 0.2mv minus mv. Uh, we see mass cancels out because it's the same. So then we see that this velocity is equal to uh, negative 0.8v. Okay, so what was the speed? So speed, there's no negative, but we get the speed was 0.8 velocity to, uh, to the left direction. Okay, hope that made sense. All right, moving on. Uh, skipping this because it's a 2D problem, and this is the last one that we're going to do. An 8-gram bullet is shot into a 4-kilogram block at rest on a frictionless horizontal surface. See the figure? The bullet remains lodged in the block. The block moves into an ideal massless spring and it compresses at 8.7 centimeters. The spring constant of the spring is 2,400 newton per meter. The initial velocity of the bullet is closest to blank. Okay, so let's figure this out. So this is a little bit interesting. Again, it's a perfectly inelastic collision because they stick together. So let's first find out, once this bullet goes inside this block, how fast it's going. So we're first going to do momentum initial equals momentum final. So the 8 gram bullet, so we're going to, uh, oh, the initial velocity of the bullet. Okay, uh, actually, we're going to work backwards, actually. So we're going to work backwards with this problem. And we're going to find, we're going to know that all this kinetic energy was all, all this elastic potential energy was all kinetic energy before. So we're going from here to when it was lodged over here. So at the very beginning, it was all elastic potential energy. Or at the very end, it was all elastic potential energy. So maybe I'll flip this around. So all that kinetic energy turned into all elastic potential energy. So we have one half, and this bullet is lodged into this. So the mass of the bullet is 0 0.008 kilograms, plus the... Uh, mass of the block, 4 kilograms, and it's going with a certain velocity, and all that kinetic energy, energy turns into elastic potential energy. 1 half K, 2400, X squared, 8.7 centimeters, so 0 0.087 squared. And now we can find the velocity. 0 0.087 squared times 1200, and then times 2, and then divided by 4.008 square root of that, and we get velocity is 2.13 meters per second. Okay, so we know when the bullet gets lodged into here, they're both moving at 2.13 meters per second. Now that we know that, let's figure out how fast the bullet was going before it got lodged in. So we're going to, before the collision happens, let's do momentum initial equals momentum final. So before the collision happens, the 0 0.008 kilogram bullet is going with a certain velocity. We don't know what it, that is. The 4 kilogram object is not moving, so the velocity of this is 0. Uh, it gets lodged in, so we have this 4 kilogram lodged into the, the bullet gets lodged in, so that we're going to combine the masses. Oops, put too many zeros. And they're both going to be moving at 2.13 meters per second. Now let's figure out what this velocity of the bullet is. So I'm going to start with the left side, 2.13 times 4.008 divided by 0 0.008. And we get ooh, 1,067 meters per second. Right. Okay. All right, guys, I hope that made sense. I know that was a little confusing because it had energy as well as momentum in the problem. But watch it again if it didn't make sense. Thanks for watching, guys. And next time, we're going to be doing 2D inelastic collision problems.